Liz Moran, thank you so much for being with me. It is a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so as mentioned yesterday, we spoke to the mayor of Hoosick Falls about the latest settlement. There's been a lot of PFOA and PFOS development in recent weeks. Um, the latest settlement is something you agree with or disagree with? We think that it's great that the village is doing what they need to do to hold the polluters accountable, that they are paying up for expenses owed to the village, and we really hope that the polluters continue to be held accountable. There's a lot that we're still waiting on from the polluters. They still need to pay for a new water source. Right. We need to make sure that they're paying for ongoing biomonitoring, that blood testing continues, that medical monitoring begins. It is not started. We need to make sure that people have their health checked out to see if they are developing diseases that have been linked with exposure to these toxic chemicals. Mm. Um, so there's still a lot that we are waiting for from the polluters. and. We hope that that continues. It, it also comes, as I mentioned during that interview, as the federal government has finally released this long-awaited toxicity study, which shows that these chemicals are actually, in fact, far more lethal or dangerous than originally believed in levels that we thought were okay are not, effectively. So what does exactly. that mean? Exactly. So we should go back to how Hoosick Falls found out about their PFOA contamination. They had, they had a whistleblower, I thought. They had a whistleblower. And at that time, there was guidance levels. So we don't have a legally enforceable level for PFOA right now in the country or in New York State. Well, the, at the state, I thought, set one. No. So New York State does has PFOA and PFOS listed as a hazardous substance. Ah, uh -huh. But we don't have a legally enforceable limit for drinking water. Uh, so we are just acting off of federal guidance, which is not legally enforceable. Uh, right now it's at 70 parts per trillion. Before Hoosick Falls happened, it actually was much higher. It was 400 parts per trillion. So now we have this new study that the Trump EPA wanted to hold off because it would be a PR nightmare. Yep. And it has found that levels significantly lower than what's existing guidance is actually what might be safe. It's at uh, 11 for PFOA yeah, and 7 for PFOS. So, but what does that mean for us going forward? If there is no legally enforceable limit, then at what basis can you create a lawsuit? I mean, so you can recoup the necessary funding to pay for your health care when and if you get sick. The bottom line is we really need to see New York State step up and show some leadership here. Back in December of 2017, the Department of Health said publicly that by the end of the year, New York State would have a maximum contaminant level. Now, that is a legally enforceable drinking water standard mm. for PFOA and PFOS. We don't have it. And we do not have it yet. The Drinking Water Quality Council, this is a body that was created in last year's budget they are supposed to come up with recommendations on PFOA. That's why PFOS. they held all those hearings, right? right? Right, exactly. And unfortunately, the last time they were supposed to meet was in March 20, 2018. And for some reason, the meeting got delayed. And we have yet to hear when they're going to meet again. And they are supposed to, at this coming meeting, come up with recommendations for an MCL. So do you have any idea why, what the holdup is? Is it because they're not ready? Is it because this federal report was released and so they're revising? Is it because they're stalling for some reason? We have the same question. We really think that this is an area where New York State should not wait for the federal government. Everything that has come out of the federal EPA at this point lends to many of the public to believe that it needs to be states stepping up and leading because we have an EPA right now that's actively rolling back environmental and public health protections. We really need New York State to step up and set an example because they've done it before. Mm. Fracking was a fabulous example of this. New York State said, until it can be proven to be safe, we're not going to proceed with fracking. And it led to a trickling effect where other states followed suit and saw what New York State did and thought that we did it right. Well, okay, so we do have recently a lawsuit, which I think is first of its kind, by the governor and the acting state attorney general regarding PFOA and PFOS contamination resulting specifically from firefighting foam, which was used in Newburgh and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with Hoosick Falls, is my understanding, and it's insufficient in your mind? I think that the lawsuit's a good step. But it can't be the only step, and it's not the one thing that the public is going to be looking for when they're looking for leadership. There are many things that the governor has promised when it comes to water quality, mm -hmm. and we're still waiting to see it. We still need to see a maximum contaminant level for PFOA and PFOS. Uh, when that's going to come, we don't know. Mm -hmm. 
we need to see that Hoosick Falls gets a new water source. The first time that was promised was about a year and a half ago at this point. And it's been promised to them on numerous occasions since. In fact, it was just about a year ago that Basil Sagos, the commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation, said that by summer of last year, a feasibility study with alternate water sources was supposed to be out, so, but, but it's when, not. But when I asked the mayor if he was satisfied with the Cuomo administration's response, which was questionable in terms of its um, alacrity, let us say, and its speed in the beginning had improved, he said yes. So he was satisfied with the response. You are not satisfied with the response. I think it's a matter of making sure that the state holds to their promises. And mm. there's just been so many occasions, and it's starting to build a track record of not fulfilling promises. How many times does it take? A year and a half ago comes the first promise of an alternate water source that the state would look into it. About a year ago, Basil Sago says summer of, 2018, of 2017, mm -hmm. a feasibility study. Didn't happen. Then they said fall didn't happen. Then they said spring of this year. Now we have an announcement, summer, and it's again, we're going to get fall, and it's not even the study necessarily. They're saying that it'll be an update to information. So, so you, when? Okay, so is the problem that there's this is not significantly or sufficiently potent a political issue? I mean, we did see the governor's primary opponent, Cynthia Nixon, sometime back, fairly early on in her campaign, travel to Hoosick Falls, and speak to residents there and subsequently has mentioned from time to time the issue in Hoosick Falls. Also Judith Ank, who's been very active in Hoosick Falls, the former EPA Region 2 Administrator, is supporting Cynthia Nixon working on her campaign. So is that a problem? Do you think that this has become too much of a political hot button and the governor's like, well that's Cynthia Nixon's issue so forget it? Although on other issues he's adopted her p position or gone beyond her position, and so this one should be one that he pays more attention to? You know, unfortunately, it seems to be that this governor has taken the approach of uh, resolving an environmental issue seems to begin and end with a press release, and that's simply not the case. Hoosick Falls folks, uh, the residents that are there that have been advocating on behalf of their community have been relentless. Mm. They take time out of their extremely busy days. These are working class people who have more than nine to five jobs. A lot of them are nurses, so they work on schedules, and they take time to advocate because they want to make sure that the water from their taps, very simply, is safe for them and their families. Uh, so unfortunately, it seems to be that the governor, when it comes to environmental issues, has to be made to address those environmental issues. This past session, we didn't see a whole heck of a lot come out of the legislature at all on any issue. Last year, it was all water quality all the time. We talked a lot about water quality. Did anything significant get done in this arena in this session? You know, it, unfortunately, it seems like in many areas the ball was dropped when it comes to the environment and water in this past year's budget and legislative session. Um, so let's t look at water in New York State. We have a water infrastructure crisis in New York. We have hundreds of water main breaks on yep. an annual basis, billions of gallons of sewage that goes into water, and we didn't see an increase in funding this year. Now, we can't continue in this trajectory because we have a federal government that's not looking to address these issues. So it's really dependent upon the New York State legislature and the governor to step up and show leadership. We didn't see that this year. There were some bills that the legislature came to agreement upon, um, a drug take back bill. Yeah. That's critical. So it doesn't sure end up in the water supply. Which exactly. Is, is More chemicals in the water. We don't need that. Right. And in the fish, which was recently actually highlighted. Go on. Right. So, you know, there were a couple things that were done, but Ultimately, in the face of what we're seeing from our federal government completely abdicating their role to protect public health and the environment, we expect leadership from a state like New York. Well, actually, what's troubling is that the news out of the EPA is more frequently what latest problem is defending the commissioner of the EPA and Scott Pruitt and various different efforts that he has undertaken to insulate himself from the public or deals that he has made or not made, et cetera. We, don't, we see a lot of that, and we don't see a lot in terms of news regarding regulation unless it's rolling back, right? Right, yeah, and that's why it really is New York State's role to make sure that our state is protected from what's going on the federal level. Mm. Well, obviously, as I mentioned last night, and I'll reiterate, uh, this is something that we've been talking quite a bit about, and we will continue to report on Hoosick Falls and water quality around the state. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.